All right, today we're talking about seven must-see attractions when you're moving to or visiting Detroit and Metro Detroit. These are the ones that are on my list to hit at least a couple times a year, and some have specific events going on that you are not gonna wanna miss, but you also gotta get tickets in advance. You gotta get them early, guys. My name is Mike Perna. I'm a local real estate agent. Myself and my team serve all of Metro Detroit, and we get calls every day, and we love it from people that are buying or selling homes. We've got your back. Having been here my whole life, there are just places and things to do that I think as Metro Detroiters, we kind of take for granted. So if you live here, and you should because it's amazing, I hope this puts some fresh eyes on some old stomping grounds. First up, we've got the Detroit Zoo. Now this one I've been going to since I was a kid, and actually here's the way to do it right here. You go early, stop just a little north on Woodward right here at the donut cutter, get the sour cream glazed donuts, they're so good, and the apple fritter, and the cinnamon sugar cake donut, and then take all of that to the zoo and eat it while you're there. Now guys, one thing I want to note is this is a cash only place. They don't take credit cards. So you got to bring like 20, 30, 40 bucks or however many donuts you're looking to eat. And looking back, I'm not sure we were actually supposed to bring in food from the outside to the zoo. Probably not because they've got their own food there. And or maybe you just probably can't now. But I mean, I'm not saying break the rules, but you know, that's up to you. Now back to the zoo. Now that the penguins are reopened, it's the largest penguin exhibit in the world. And then since redoing the Arctic Cafe to become Table 28, and scope out the font they used. It's a not so subtle nod to Jurassic Park, 100%, same font. The zoo has fun events going throughout the year also. Over Halloween, they do the zoo boo the entire month of October with jugglers and jack-o'-lanterns and trick-or-treating spots throughout. It's a ton of fun. And over the holidays, they do wild lights with over a million Christmas lights running late November through the first week of January. Over the summer at the zoo, there's live music and there's also zoo yoga throughout the weekdays, which is actually really cool. You're doing yoga like with the animals. Next up, the DIA, the Detroit Institute of Arts established in 1885. It's one of the oldest and largest museums in the US. It's 658,000 square feet with over 65,000 works spanning 100 galleries and 2,500 years of art and history. USA Today's Reader's Choice 2023 contest voters ranked the DIA as the number one art museum in the entire United States. Now that's pretty sweet. The Diego Rivera Courtyard is home to one of the most famous murals about the car industry in Detroit. He created it in 1931. It was paid only $10,000 by the Edsel Ford Fund to get that done. It actually created quite a bit of controversy at the time. Clergy from the Catholic Church called it ungodly and un-American and petitioned to have it taken down and destroyed. That didn't happen, thankfully. That Sunday, over 10,000 people went to the DIA to see it after the church made that declaration, and it was decided that they would keep it because of its popularity. It's his most famous work, and I'm glad that they held firm because it's gorgeous. On Fridays, they have live music, there are art classes and learning workshops for kids and adults, and then the Kresge Court has actual good food, not like vending machine food. It's a beautiful court that makes you feel just like you're at Hogwarts. My all-time favorite display there were the costumes of Star Wars when they had the actual costumes used in the movies, including the ones by Natalie Portman playing Queen Amidala. The three different Chewbacca costumes and they became lighter as they progressed. The first one was so hot it was water cooled and still the actors could only be in it for about an hour at a time. And of course the robes by the Jedi, Emperor Palpatine. I could go on about that display for like an hour. Let, let's keep moving on. The DIA is pretty sweet. Go check it out. The Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village are third on my places to list you gotta see if you haven't. Created in 1929 by of course Henry Ford who created a lot of this stuff in Metro Detroit. His intent behind it was to showcase America's history and the industrial revolution and ingenuity of Americans. It definitely took on a life of its own beyond that when Greenfield Village right next door was added in in 1933 spanning over 80 acres with two dozen historical buildings that were moved from their original locations to Greenfield Village. What do you want to see here? There are several presidential limos including the one that John F. Kennedy was assassinated in, the Rosa Parks bus, the one where she refused to move to the back of the bus, and the Wright Brothers workshop, a recreated workshop where the Wright Brothers actually made the first airplane. When you're there, you can catch a ride in an actual Model T that's been restored and preserved. They have glass blowing demonstrations right on site, pottery, and it's a working farm. Year round, they've got three things that I always get to. First, the oldest antique car show in the US is at Henry Ford annually. Second, Halloween in Greenfield Village, and this thing is really cool. They started with a couple volunteers 40 years ago, dressing up as past presidents and giving lessons. And now it's over a thousand hand-carved jack-o'-lanterns, live music and jugglers, and carriage and train rides, and all things spooky. And last up is the Holiday Nights in Greenfield Village. 
There are carousel rides, ice skating, Model T rides, horse-drawn carriage rides, artist demonstrations, Christmas trees all over the place, and every night they end the night doing fireworks. It has a very Disney vibe. It really does. Now, I can't leave off the Detroit Riverfront or Riverwalk, as the first phase was called. I think I've run that 1.2-mile span as part of Detroit's marathon every year for about a decade now. Now the DeQuinter Cut is complete to the east, and the Joe Lewis portion of the walk is about 80% complete, and when connected to Belle Isle, it'll be over 3.5 miles of walking or biking path. Right now, over 3 million people a year either use it or visit it to get around downtown to avoid traffic as it connects the GM building, the Hart Plaza, to Cobo Hall. Now there are skate clubs that take advantage of it, run clubs that do 5K and 10Ks every week, live music, yoga, and moonlight yoga going from 8 to 9.30 p.m. in the summer right on the walk. Going north to Bloomfield, we've got the Cranbrook Science Center as a must-see. Opened in the 1930s by George and Ellen Booth, former owners of the Detroit Free Press, the Science Center has expanded and grown a life of its own. They built a state-of-the-art planetarium recently and have interactive displays for kids to learn physics and technology, and they've got a actual life-size T-Rex replica on site you can stand under to get a real feel for how big the T-Rex really was. You can feel a real mastodon's fur and get up close and touch a real meteorite from space. The Cranbrook Observatory has three new telescopes and new retracting dome to look out into space at night. The Atchison Planetarium is a wonder to explore the universe, and the projector is the same one used by pilots in the military to train. So I guess it's like, you know, military grade, right? Next up, I've got the Heidelberg Project. Now this one a lot of people don't actually know about, and it's really cool and it's free. It was started in 1986 by Tyree Guyton. His grandfather encouraged him to be the good in the world through his art instead of through a weapon. In 1998, funding from the National Foundation of the Arts helped him to take off. Named after the street this outdoor walking art museum is on, it was fiercely argued for it to come down for over 20 years and is now just a part of the city of Detroit. It's wholly accepted, which I love. The Heidelberg Project has definitely had a share of controversy over the last 36 years, including elements destroyed by city-sponsored bulldozing, and a string of arson fires. However, it's endured and become one of the most visited cultural sites in Detroit, with guests from more than 140 countries coming in each and every year. The most pervasive element of the art environment was a series of clock faces in digital times painted on sidewalks and trees and old buildings. Each one had a static time and each one was different. The clocks have become a major theme of the Heidelberg Project, and we find that it's a reminder to, for us to take the time to reflect where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going. In a more philosophical sense, the clocks parallel reference to what the great philosopher Plato said about time, which was that time is a moving image of reality. Albert Einstein said that time is an illusion. Therefore, the times painted on the clocks do not hold a particular meaning in reference to a time, but pose the questions of, what is time? What is your reality? What time is it for you in the world today? Next up, you've got to check out Campus Marshes. This is a really unique place to me, having grown up here and in Detroit, and I'm glad I've been here to see it kind of reborn in a sense, but it's always kind of been there as long as Detroit's been here. It was a military training ground dating back to the French and English colonies, and through the years after the founding of Detroit in 1701, it kind of lost its way until 2004, when Bedrock, owned by Rocket Mortgage, started redoing it and revitalizing it. It's super small. It's only 2.5 acres total, but they pick a lot into those 2.5 acres. In the winter, the Detroit Christmas trees on site, and they've got ice skating, and right next door is the Cadillac Lodge in Winter Marcus with over 20 little pop-up shops. And also right there in the winter is the Monroe Street Midway with an 80-foot Arctic slide, bumper cars, and an arcade. In the summer, they do a mock beach with a bar. They put up a stage for live music throughout the summer for free shows. And last summer, I was down there, and I saw a free show the city had brought in George Clinton in the Parliament Funkadelic. And I would have paid to see that. And in fact, I have paid to see George Clinton. And he actually still lives on a farm in Michigan, not too far away from Detroit. It's a great launch point to see all the other fun things downtown. Little Caesars is here. Cliff Bells is here. Comerica Park is here. Ford Field is here. All of it being walkable. So those are my favorite seven things to go do and see. And they're not all the things in Metro Detroit, but I think those are the big ones. What am I missing, guys? Comment below with anything across Metro Detroit that I should be featuring in a video, or I should actually just like get out and go see. My name is Mike Perna, local real estate agent. Thank you again for watching. I will see you on the next video.